Honda 550 race replica. It's not a real thing. It was just built up in 2011 to take part in the Isle of Man, which it did. And I think maybe some of you have seen the video. Uh, it's taken part at Mallory Park. It's been a lot of fun. It's sat in here for some time because of COVID, didn't get used. And maybe, we're not 100% sure, it might be coming up in a few weeks' time for an event. Hence why we wanted to make sure it would go. And today, all I've done to charge the battery, put some fuel in the bike, in the tank, and fired it up on the rollers. And it's Honda reliability. Fired up, does everything it should do. So, um, yeah. Quite pleased with that. We pumped the tyres up. I need to just check it all over, and um, you know, obviously, we're going to be doing a, a hill climb if that comes off. So it needs to be 100% safe and make sure everything is tight and nothing's perished like fuel lines. But no, it's good to go. Um, today, we've got a new workshop blog, and we're going to talk about the Triumph Tiger 100. We've also got a, a Tiger 90 in here. One bus comes along and another one comes along at the same time. So we've got two very similar bikes, both with the bikini on. So we'll talk about those. We'll fire up the Tiger 90 because it only came in for very minor work. Stale fuel in the petrol tank, jellyfied, tank taken off, cleaned out, had destroyed the um, fuel tap um, plungers, so new corks, new plungers put in carb overhauled, that's quite bad. So I put a few new bits in the carb and put it back together and that's probably gonna be sold. Um, it's a nice little bike, but I will go through that in a moment. The Tiger 100, we'll put the head back on, we'll build the engine up and hopefully have that running as well. So we can see a comparison between the 350 and the 500. So that's where we are today. <laughs> Okay, so here we have the 350, Tiger 90. It was called Tiger 90, 90, 90 miles an hour. That's what they claim the top speed would be. Same with the 500, 100, 100 miles an hour. So, as near as. We were talking about bikini, this part here, which we have here on this one. But when this was on, Notice there's no rear section. That's missing, which is a bit of a shame. But you can see now what it should look like. Also, this one has got the correct air filter. It's got the pancake filter. We spoke about the large hole in here, and we had like a K&M filter, which actually was um, Amel's version of one. Now, what I've managed to do, just show you on this one, because it's here. I've managed to remove the centre part, that filter that was all crushed, take it all apart and set it into this pancake filter. It's offset, which it has to be, so that is the centre of the other filter, set into here with a Jubilee clip. So when we come to do this one, it will fit nicely behind that, that carburetor in that hole, the same as this one. So it gives it a nice detail. That's how it should be. So other things we're gonna talk about very quickly on this one. We, we spoke about the distributor drive on the 500 over there. Well, this is probably a couple of years younger. So they've done away with this, they blanked it off. They just put a screw in here. Um, and what you have here is the conventional points assembly Remember I spoke about the timing case cover and about the points would be here on the later one? Well, that's how it is now. But this is a nice little bike. It's, it's very lightweight. Go very well, really. Um, the bottom end is very much the same as a 500. In fact, you can up rate a 350 to a 500. Rods, barrels, pistons. So we're going to just start it up. Um, yeah, basically, yeah, I spoke about it just now. It came in jellyfied fuel, jellyfied uh, fuel in the tank, uh, it needed the, the tank flushed out, new tap uh, plungers, carburetor overhauled, 
it's it was suffering a little bit so it's been through the sonic cleaner i've managed to get it okay i think now so we're just going to fire this up and uh, you can see what it sounds like so we put both taps on we've got reserve here and there's not a lot of fuel in here we just tickle the carb we won't give it any choke it should just go straight into line it's a um, 12 volt ignition system now, it's been upgraded. So we just turn the key on. It's very sweet, quite low compression, easy to start, but performance wise, yeah, very good. Sounds like a big bike. Quite manageable. It's got a Siamese exhaust system, which means it's got a two into one, which a lot of people quite like, reduces some of the weight. It's got your map rack on the tank, so it's, and it's got a rev counter, as well as the speedo. So it's a bit like a baby Bonneville, really. And it picks up nicely. I think actually this is possibly up for sale, this one. It's not been used for about three or four years, but that's it. So now you, you can see now what they're like and you can hear it. So we're going to do that comparison a bit later on. Okay, um, we got here two Rocket Gold Stars. My one and Marcus's one. It's finished. Uh, what can I say, the differences? Well, we know it's got some of the Eddie Dell bits on it. But it does run on a standard gearbox. So this gearbox here is actually stamped up STD. And usually people will reverse a cam plate inside. This one's not been done. So it's, the gears are conventional, which threw me a little bit because I put it into what I thought was first gear, it was in second gear. So it's a completely bog standard gearbox in there. But um, we've done quite a lot to this. It was. It's been sort of laid up since the 1990s, so it needed to be recommissioned. So tires and tubes. We removed the gaiters from the front and put um, shrouds on, painted the shrouds, new wiring looms, new cables, cleaned up a lot of chrome work, new stays on the mud guard, uprated the front brake. It's got a twin lead and shoe brake now here which is a, a nice conversion. Had to put the assembly in the lathe and reduce the lining slightly because it wouldn't go into the drum. Made a cable for that because you can't buy one. Um, engine wise, because it had supposed to have been done, we'd done very little really. I say very little, the head has been taken off and replaced the valve guides and the valves because it did sound a little bit rattly. But as for the rest of the engine, like I've said before, unless you take everything apart, I can't put my hand up and say that's 100% because I didn't build that engine. I've done the top end, the valves and the guides. We've reconditioned the carb, we've put some new bits in the carburetor. The mag has been cleaned up. The dynamo, I've tested that, it's got a good output, done an unregulated output. The voltage regulator, the coil was burnt out, contacts on the second coil. I've got a new control box for it, I've reconditioned one from a chap who is, is well into his retirement age. I won't mention his name because I think it's best I don't, but he's very, very clever with those regulator boxes. We had a nasty dent on the tank. That was, that was literally from the fuel cap, the lever put in there and that's all pressed out. Uh, seat had to have be the, the fasteners, the threads were stripped out, so tapped out. New battery, exhaust system off, new oil lines, um, clutch assembly taken out, so all the primary drive, replace the sprocket, gearbox sprocket, and I mentioned to you about the um, sprocket not always being changed when it should be, that's been replaced. Um, it's a little trick, when you come to ever do any work on any gearbox, when you get a new seal, and I'll show you a bit later on, the pattern seals have like a, a, like a rubber ring almost on the back. You need to 
just flatten it off a little bit and put some silicone on there because if you press the seal in and put the clip back on all can get around the back and I'll show you that because that's where people get caught out put a new seal in the gearbox starts leaking um, what have we done with the back QD wheel check the linings in there we've put a new sealing rubber behind the rubbers we haven't replaced because the ones you get now are they're not good quality they're not as like the original so we're going to try and source some better rubbers to replace the, the rider rubbers not the pillion ones they're okay it has got very high compression that is quite a lot to start actually I will fire it up now but even I find it quite hard to start but it is on standard gearing so it's not it's not going to be a, a tall uh, top gear by any means but it'd be comfortable to ride and it you know be it'd be happy with it so we've got some nice tires on there we've got the Avon um, road rider tires which give you good feedback but uh, I think we cover most of what we've done on the bike um, it looks pretty so we're just going to start it up okay both taps on there's not a lot of fuel in here uh, tickle him up we won't give it any choke but you have to get the advance and retard about right because it will kick back quite a bit choke is off We'll put that about midway, pull the clutch in and just free that up, get it to the top of the compression. So that is done. Like I say, engine has not been down. And like I say, really, I always like to have an engine down, but I know it's extra money, but then you know what you've got. I think the customer of this one, because the gearbox is standard, get used to riding it like this. And if you want to upgrade it, we can consider later on uh, maybe getting an RRT2 gearbox for it or maybe we can do something to improve, do the reverse cam plate anyway and maybe change some of the ratios. It has got belt primary drive as we know in here uh, with a, a, a different clutch which is nice and soft but um, no it's good, it's all good so next thing really is to get him down and get him on the bike and see how he goes on. Oh, we put the nice old fashioned horn on here as well so it, uh, yeah, it can be heard. Not as well as uh, the Royal Enfield. It's not as clear as that. But um, the clocks and everything else are correct. We've only got one pilot light, and that is actually on Speedo. It hasn't got one in the rev counter. But everything's working on it. And uh, yeah, I think he'd be pleased because it was in a bit of a, a state. This one has got steel rims. It hasn't got the alley rims. Um, but it's turned out okay. But you can see the comparison between my one and, and this one here. And um, yeah, it's, it's quite a pleasant machine. Okay, the Tiger 100 head. Now all it's really coming for was originally Orlix. Head gasket was loose. Push rod tube, rubbers were leaking. And uh, so what have we done? I've replaced already, put new gaskets in the manifold because I said to you about always replace those. Right, the head itself, we've decarbonised the chambers very quickly. The valves aren't coming out on this, we, because as I said before, it's just coming purely for leaks. So we've cleaned it all up in here. Now, I've already installed the neoprene seals, the top ones, to show you a screwdriver. What I tend to do with these ones, before I put them in, I tend to put just a little bit of well seal underneath. Because I've had this in the past where the push rod tube goes down, these ones aren't spacks, they're recessed in. 
but sometimes I've had them where they squeeze out the sides. It just holds it in place. Because this head, I did put it on the block over here. I've got my surface block. I rubbed the head down because it's got a lot of gouge marks. Now here, I've tried to get as much out as possible, but I've slightly coated this with well seal. Don't normally, you shouldn't need to do that because you've got a copper head gasket, but it will just make sure it doesn't leak because it's got some nasty ones here and a big one there. So there's a bit of well seal all over that. So that's all cleaned up. This had been painted black and that's what you can see with that crud in the middle there. So we're just going to put the head on first. We'll talk about the carb in a moment. So what we need to do though first is we're just going to need to do these lower pushrod tubes. Now the seals on these early ones are different from the later ones. They just have this insert rubber. So we're not going to put anything around here because it's got a slip over the um, uh, cam follower blocks. But what I will do, see that one's quite loose in there. I will just coat the inside just a little bit with Vaseline. You can use anything just so it slips on easily. The trouble is, all this stuff now is pant stuff, it's not quite like the original, so it does vary, but it's all we can get these days. Right, so these tubes can go on first. So what have we done here? We've just literally decarbonized top of the pistons. It's running on standards, so that's not bad. There were some score marks in the bore, but we're not doing anything with that. Um, before we put the head gasket on, we're just going to put the pushrod tubes down onto the um, tappet blocks. So it's just a case of just pushing down over the top and making sure it seats, sits in nice. Don't drop the rubber out on the loose one. Okay, so that's, that's in now. So the next thing now really is head gasket. Now that's already been treated. You can see this discoloration. They've been annealed. They're heated up and put into water. So a new head gasket. Just put that straight on. So we're ready to put this back on. Just make sure your top seals are not coming out. They shouldn't do because you've got a bit of sealer on there. Just line it all up first really before you do anything with it. These have to come slightly forward sometimes. You get the back one in. On this one here, it's got a little bit of alley missing out the front. You can see it's been chipped out and you can see the, the neoprene seal, but it'll be okay. We just make sure the back's in. And you can see it's sitting down. So the next thing really is to put the four outer bolts back in there. We've got our four new bolts, outside bolts. The others are all badly mangled up. Just line up head gasket. Just a little bit of copper slip. Don't need much on there. Now these washers that are here are inserts, so don't think they're the washers, you need the additional washers. Triumph engines are, are very easy to work on, and this sort of overhaul most people can do, because you don't need a lot of tools for it, and it is quite straightforward. Right, we're just going to pull those down a little bit, nip them up with a spanner, We're not going to pull anything down, we're just literally just snipping the head up because we've still got the inner four to go on and you want to make sure everything is in line before you start putting any pressure down. Right, so we've got our bolts back in place. What we could do, we just want to speed things up a little bit, we're just going to put the exhaust system back on here now. 
and then, then that's done, then we can concentrate on getting this built up. I just remembered what I was going to show you earlier. We was talking about the gearbox seal being replaced. Uh, this replies to BSA Triumph especially because it's like a top hat seal. Now, you could go and put a new seal in and as you know, you have bearing on that side, seal goes in as a circlip. That's fine, that should be how it is, and no more than that. When you fill the gearbox with oil, you start seeing a drip, and you're wondering whether, if there's a little bit of lateral movement, well, whether the shape of the seal is slightly out, it's like an oval, and it's just a little bit of a gap, it's not that at all. What it is, when they make these seals now, I think I said just now, there's almost like, there's a ridge round here. See that there? Well, when that's put into the gearbox, that holds that seal off of the face of the, ca the casing. And it allows the oil to get round the back of that. So what I tend to do, I won't do this one, I flatten that off. Put a bit of WD-40 on, on here or anything like that. And just rub that seal and keep moving it round. And reduce that down. Take that down. It's probably done for manufacturing more than likely. Then what I do afterwards, a little bit of silicone, just smear a silicone around there, let it semi go off, then put your seal in, then put your circle clip in, then it won't leak. Because I can guarantee you, a lot of people are saying, the box didn't leak before, put a seal in, it leaks. And it's not coming from the lip, it's coming from here. So that's a little tip. Always pays, before you put your saw system back together, well, everywhere where it blows, you'll see a black line of carbon and oil. A bit of WD-40 on there, and get it off as much as you can. We want this to slide back together nice and easy. So inside here, it's a bit sooty, and we'll do that as well, because when that goes on to the, the outer collars, exhaust collars here, also, you get a loose one like that, make sure that's tight. We put a bar on here and just nip that up. So we'll do that in a second. So we're just gonna literally just clean this one up inside as well. So same again, a bit of WD-40 on a bit of rag. Here's an old bit of rag on here. Tend to soak the rag and do it this way, it's easier. Just make sure those collars are tight. I've just nipped it a little bit, but I'm just going to put a bit more pressure on. Because if they're loose, the exhaust will come backwards and forwards, and you'll think the pipe's loose, it won't be the inserts here. So just check both of them. That one's okay. Yeah, a little bit of copper slip inside the pipe, because the collar's going to go onto that. I'll work from this side, just hang it on for the moment and get a bit of a start on it. Okay, a little bit of copper slip again on the silencer inside. Well, I've just putting the silencer back on. Now this bracket, you shouldn't see this. In fact, this is the wrong hand because it should go behind. Because it's mounted this way, it isn't correct. You should see that on the bike like that, if you can imagine. If we look at the other one here quickly, the bracket should be at the back, not at the front, and it should be behind this bracket that's on the frame. So it isn't quite as it should be, but it will go back on the way it fits. These you can tighten up. It has like a, like a spring washer in here. You can pack these out. This one's okay, but when they get all floppy, you can take that bolt out and you can put a, another spring in there or a spring washer. You can always tighten those up with something. Even a fibre washer in there will help. Just tighten this up. Okay, that's done. Okay, we've got one of these very soft, it's not plastic both ends. It's got like a rubbery bit. 
and we just make sure, we don't want to dent this, but just make sure everything sits in properly. We just make all of these joints up together before we Right, when you get to this stage, always put oil back on the stem of your valves. So you've got some lubrication there. It'll find its way back down through the centre tube. But it's always good for start-up because there won't be any oil delivery from the return for a, a short while. So that's got some lubrication. Put some oil down in there because we're going to put our push rods back in now. We've cleaned all four up, we just make sure that the cups aren't loose at the top. They are all the same size, they're not worn, they're not bent, they're all good. So the important thing is now just to pick up down the bottom, get this one in. And what we do, we do a check and we just turn the engine over and we see them all go up and down, we know we're okay. when they go in properly. So by turning the engine over, making sure that all four move, then we always make sure we put the rocker box on and we have both down. So we just make sure that that one is up, that one's up, that one's up. We've got one that's not located, it's just this one here. Just do these ones. Right, so we'll start with the exhaust one, so we make sure they're both down. This one will be up, because that'll be that valve open on the right hand cylinder. Right, so we're just going to put a bit of well seal around there. We've got new gaskets to go on. So we, uh, we just need to just clean up the rocker box. It's got some black silicone on here. We just give that a scrape with a knife and the excess on the inside, take that out. So scrape it all away. And we're just blowing with the airline at the moment, but anything that's on the inside that shouldn't be there, get rid of it now. Because it's a little bit oily, and after you scraped it, a little bit of brake cleaner, spray it over. We're just going to blow it out with an air line because we have it. Okay, these gaskets are like the Japanese gaskets. You don't normally use a sealer, especially on this top surface. It's like a, a carbon finish. This is more underneath here like a, a standard gasket. So because the top of the head isn't brilliant, we're just going to use a little bit of well seal on the head but not on the rocker boxes. So just a tiny amount. Okay, so you can see what I'm doing. I've got a mascara brush and I'm painting on Well Seal. Now Well Seal is an old product. It's, it's not like Red Hermitite. It's, a, it's better than that. It's, it's, it's not like silicone. Silicone you don't use with a gasket. This you do. And this would go semi-hard. It would just hold a gasket in place. Now, silicone is good to use if you haven't got a gasket. And if you use it with a gasket, it tends to push a gasket around, pushes it out. This will hold the gasket in place. Now, I'm only using it on one surface here. But it's most important to get it clean first. Make sure you haven't got any oil underneath there. Because if you put this on, it's like trying to paint at home and you're using the paintbrush onto a greasy surface, the paint won't, it won't hold, it will spread everywhere and won't go onto where you want it to go. So as you can see that's just holding nicely. We don't need too much, 
but because we have got quite a few nicks out of this it would just help if there is a leak or possibility of a leak it will stop it from actually pushing the oil outside. There's another reason why we use a sealer on the bottom in a way because the gasket has got the cutaway holes. Now if you don't use a sealer this will move about all over the place so what we have to do is just pick that up Now you can see everything lines up and the, the actual push rods are running through the centre of the gasket, those holes there. So it keeps it lined up for the rocker box. Before we put the rocker box on, we just push the rockers down, so out of the way, and we've put a bit of oil. Not too much because you want it to run out and go right that gasket that we just put in place. But just enough to give it a bit of lube in there. Right, so now we should be able to come underneath here then line up your front holes with your studs now the rockers, now just lift those up a little bit because otherwise the push rod can go the wrong side of the rocker We just lift that up a little bit with a finger. It should automatically go into the cup at the top. That looks like excessive clearance, but I'm sure you once you put the bolts in, that go quickly. Right, what's important first of all is to make sure everything lines up now. This early one has the front stay on the exhaust rocker box. Now the later one has it on the inlet rocker box. It has a bracket coming off of here. This one is just a bracket on the frame tube. So it's a little bit different. I'm just making sure it's around the right way. These are stamped left and right. So I've just been playing around, make sure it's as it should be. And it is. So we can carry on putting this together. Now get your washer down below your frame tube before we start putting the bolt through and it will go down. Now the rocker feed is not off the ends like the early pre-unit was, it's actually off a union up the inside. We can get to those, just got to really make sure the copper washers are okay. But we'll put that on the moment, we're just going to put these down we we'll put those screws in. The customer's got some new um, covers to go on here and the clips which I mentioned you can put as a mod so you don't lose the covers. So we will put it all back down but we'll have to replace his later on with new ones. But we can get that back together today. Yeah, don't pull any bolts down until you're ready to do up your head in the right sequence and you work from the middle out. And they're only 18 and a half pounds feet on here. So it's, it's not heavy torquage, so don't overdo it. But you do need a torque wrench because you've got an alley head and you can distort it. And you really need to run the engine and recheck these as well after 500 miles really. Okay. Both rocker boxes on, nothing's tightened down properly yet, but we need to get the rocker feed pipe back on. Now, the copper washers are okay. Normally with a gasket set, a full gasket set, you get a new um, copper washers. So that one's holding in place. The copper washer goes on, this bolt here, it comes up through the rocker box, and then we're just gonna hang on to it. We're gonna put a washer, like on the rear one, on the top, Get around the cable. Right now we can just off that up. It's a good chance this is going to drop back out down the bottom, so just be a bit careful. Copper wash on the top. You've just got your dome nut to go on the top. It's the right one. Okay, we're going to torque the head down, 
it's important to use a torque wrench and to work from the middle out. So we're going to do these inner ones here, diagonally. Then we're going to work on these outer ones. There's only eight to worry about. But the torque wrench setting I've got is 18 and a half pounds feet. Okay, you don't want to go, try and keep to what they say, don't go over, because you don't want to pull threads out and distort any of this. We don't do our torque all in one go. We go around it. You could do it a bit more of a spanner, but now I'm here with this with a ratchet, it's all right. I'm trying to keep out the way of the camera. When you do the oil union pipe, when you start the engine, do check these copper washers. If it starts leaking, nip it up, but if it carries on, change those washers, because I've had to use the old ones again. We would normally replace them, but I think we should be okay. But just make sure, like I say, always make sure you've done them up tight, because once the tank's on, you won't be aware that you've got a leak and you'll fill this head around the fins here with oil before you realise you've got a leak. So we're ready now to set the tappets. Right, new day. So yesterday we thought we'd finish a bit earlier, go and have a beer. So today, um, from where we were from yesterday, the rocker boxes are on. We're just going to adjust up one more valve. They're all the same, these. You make sure that one inlet or one exhaust valve is open, fully open, and you adjust the other side. So it's quite straightforward. Two foul, four foul. But they run on very close clearances, these. So just make sure maybe just, it's, it's not going to be a tight two or tight four foul. Make sure you've got a nice kiss fit. Um, what else has been done that you haven't seen? I have had the strainer out. I've had the filter out of the tank. It's got oil in the tank. I do need to top that up. I'm a little bit low on oil at the moment, so that will have to be done afterwards. But for running up today, it'd be fine. So we're just going to do one more valve adjustment. Then we are overhaul that carb, get that back on with a pancake filter. Then we can put the bikini back on. So we should be there soon. So when you adjust valves on a Triumph, you make sure that one valve is open on the exhaust and one is shut. Then obviously you adjust the one that's open. So make sure this this valve is fully down. We're just going to check that clearance on that one first. You can hear that we've got movement. Just with these, it's best just to have an old set of feeder gauges because you need to bend the ends up and just kiss it underneath. Leave it in place like that. Slacken off the lock nut with a small spanner. We just make a very small adjustment. I would normally use both hands here, one holding this, but just so I don't take all the view away. Don't over adjust it. Leave that there and just nip it off with your spanner. Bear in mind, just be careful that the locking, the adjuster rather, the adjuster part of the tap, it doesn't go around when you lock off the lock nut. So we're just going to bring that back a bit. Don't nip it too tight to start with. Make sure you haven't closed the clearance up. It's a nice kiss fit. Now we can just put a bit more and it might just move it a fraction, but you compensate for that. So that should now be
It's gone a little bit tight. So, put it back in. This time, hold it because it uh, doesn't want to go around any more than it is. Pick up the right spanner. That's it. You can hear the movement. So that one's done. We're just going to check this one as well. Too many spanners the same here. Do I double check them? Yeah, I'm going to go back over on the inlets, just check those again. Okay, I've, I've just put the plugs back in, put them in dry because I normally put a bit of oil in the bores before I start it. Just want to see what that compression's like. So we're just going to Which is good. We've not had the valves out on this, and just to make sure that nothing got underneath the valves, it wouldn't have done anyway, but just checking. So I'm just going to whip those plugs out, put a tiny bit of oil in each bore. We've um, taken the insert out of the uh, KM filter, which looked like a KM filter, and it fits straight onto the body of the carburetor. So we just want to take, well we've got the jets out, we're just going to take out the screws off the end of the float bowl, take the float out, take the needle out and just make sure it's clean inside and just give it a quick clean because when it was running it wouldn't run off choke so it just wants a little bit of TLC. Okay so before we put the slide back in the carburetor, this one's got a brass slide which is a bit of an upgrade. But if there's lots of score marks, which there is on this one, it's a bit knocked around. It's not a bad idea to polish it out. A bit of Solvo or metal polish, but just go up and down. Don't go that way, because this is the way the slide will run up and down. So you want to really work on the score marks. So if just rub them out a little bit. It just helps, because sometimes these can get a bit sticky. And we all know when you've got a slide that won't shut back, you can end up with the engine running a bit fast or worse than ever, it's stuck wide open. See, now you can see the improvement to what it was just now. Just give that a polish out. And that now looks far better. It's got rid of some of the scoring. You're gonna get that scoring, but they'll make it move up and down more smoothly. What you usually do is just put a little bit of WD-40. I have cleaned up in here with a little bit of Solvo earlier as well. It just makes that slide drop down easily. Remember when we took this off, it was tight on the last bit coming out. So we just make sure in the running position it is okay. Okay, so now we've got a pancake filter back on, which it should have had, because that's why we had that large hole. And that actually fits in there quite nicely. A bit of fiddle around, we had the cap off, distributor cap off to get it back in place. Carbs back on, got the nuts on, just going to tighten this down, just make sure the cables are free, everything's moving okay. And um, yeah, so we can tighten the carb up, then we can put the bikini side panel back on, and then the fuel tank, and we're ready to go. Right, so I've got to put a new fuel line on, fuel pipe. The thing is, the fittings are two different sizes, so it's better to have a, a smaller bore size to fit on a smaller fitting. Then we just heat this up to go on the larger fitting. That way we know it's going to be a nice tight fit. With clips as well, I'll be fine. So nice and hot, bit of WD-40 in there so it slides on. And hopefully, we can get it in one go. That's it. 
Okay, so everything's back together. We haven't done the wiring yet, we're going to do it later. But we've made sure we've got a spark and uh, the engine's all back together. So, fuel's on, tip with the carburetor, no leaks. So, we'll see if we go. We've got a good spark. Whether we need choke, we'll put the choke down. This one's got the lever type one on this side. It drops down and it sort of locks. So we'll try that and we'll give it a kick over. I think we'll take that off choke. Just make sure that key's in the right position. Actually it's my fault. Ig ignition, it's a funny one this one. If you look around here with a camera, you see it's not very clear. So it's that position there. That's on now. We we'll give it a bit of choke, I think, just to start with. Right, the same good problem before, it won't run off choke, so we need to investigate that a little bit. Just checking around it. We just alter the pilot air screw a little bit. Let's put this about there. Let's try that again. The exhaust might be blowing a little bit. Okay, it doesn't run particularly well at the moment. Um, the exhaust has got a bit of a blow to it, but we'll sort that out. But we're just really just making sure that hasn't got any leaks around the pushrod tubes, which it had before. Um, just give it another start up. I think we need to order the carburetion quite a bit on this. So a little bit more work to do to it, but um, yeah, we haven't got any leaks around the top of the engine. The underside of the engine, we had a lot of leaks when it came in, so we want to have a look and see. We seem to have a bit of a leak here from the pressure release valve, so we need to just take this out, and just check this. I can see it's dropped on the floor. So it's it's not 100% good bike, 
but we can improve it. Let's just sort these things out now and uh, we'll give it another go. It's got a ticky sound to it, hasn't it? Make sure nothing is rubbing anywhere in the cap. Just need to find that. Um, where it's blowing from. I think we're just going to pull the head gasket down. It's done to the right torque settings, but I think we just need to just check that again because it just sounds like a bit of a blow on the head. Um, it wasn't a particularly good cylinder head, we faced it off. So if we can just put a bit of, just torque that down a little bit now, just check those settings. Sometimes these heads can crack. Yeah, I can see it. I can see it. I can see it. Could be there. Where the collar. Sitting there. Yeah, this Siamese system, it doesn't fit 100% up here on the header pipe. There is, it's not fitting far enough up. We're gonna to have to compromise and try and get this in a bit more because it's got a slight blow there. And if you look at the top, on these collars they have a hole, top and bottom, so you can put a, a bar in to tighten it up. It's been blowing through here. That's what the noise was, and if we look here, we see little splats of oil. So we sort that out, and it'll be sweet. So just a little bit of work there to do.
Okay, so we sorted out a little bit of a blow leak here on the pipe. Um, I've just got to replace one of the rocker feed uh, copper washers, but it's running sweet. We're starting to back up, but I've still got quite a bit to do this. I've got to do the wiring, I've got to do this brake arm the cable clip here, because that's only made out of copper shim. Um, it's got a proper service, but now it runs okay, and we've got the pancake filter on it, it should have. But we'll just do a quick start up on this one, and you can see the difference now how it runs. And then we'll fire up the um, 350, and you can see the comparison, see what they both sound like. So, quick start, hot start. Ignition on. is just a bench. We'll do this one. 